is up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the new 2022 nissan rogue courtesy of younger nissan in frederick maryland for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below we are in this one today because you guys have requested it but not just that there is a brand new engine for the 2022 rogue as well the cvt has also been reworked so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering fuel ride quality sound system all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing it so as you can imagine there are a few different trim levels for the 2022 rogue you got the s starting at twenty six thousand eight hundred fifty dollars sv for twenty eight thousand five hundred and forty sl for thirty three thousand two hundred and lastly the platinum being the one we have today starting at thirty six thousand six hundred and thirty dollars by the way that was all pricing for the front wheel drive configuration if you wanted to add all wheel drive you can do that but simply add fifteen hundred dollars then to any of those prices but so then as i alluded to at the beginning regardless of trim level that you get with the power plant is going to be the same and it is new for 2022 powering the rogue now is a 1.5 liter turbocharged inline three cylinder putting out 201 horsepower at 5600 rpm 225 pound feet of torque coming in at 2800 rpm power sent to front wheels or all wheels through a cvt with paddle shifters which we will test out here in a little bit zero to 60 time is going to come in at approximately 7.5 seconds last year's model was approximately 8.2 so substantially quicker to 60 so that's pretty cool mpg numbers coming in at 30 in the city 37 on the highway for the front wheel drive 28 in the city 34 then on the highway for the all-wheel drive taking regular unleaded fuel i said that before we do any kind of fun acceleration or paddle shifter test here in the rogue i wanted to mention to you guys there is a circular dial directly behind the shifter that is going to give you your drive modes those drive modes will include eco sport snow and off-road and those last two the snow and off-road that is going to be if you go with one of those all-wheel drive configurations at least but ultimately they will adjust things like the shift points throttle response steering sensitivity and all-wheel drive engagement then as well so now how they got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and test out the acceleration and paddle shifters here at the same time by the way there is a full manual shift mode you just simply slide the shifter to the back and to the right that is going to allow you to manually shift through using the paddle shifters although keep in mind it is a cvt so you're technically not changing gears but still let's see how realistic nissan made that when it comes to actually shifting through the paddle shifts or so let's go ahead and find a straightaway and let's test all that out three two first gear here we go holy cow <laughs> it's it's okay i mean you can definitely still tell it's a cvt but this shifts that was decent actually one of the better shifting paddle shifters when it's paired up with the cvt i'll put it that way acceleration for me at least was still so so I mean, it's definitely not the quickest thing in the world still, but it's a heck of a lot better than last year's model that I also reviewed. I'll definitely say that. So it's all right. It should definitely get the job done. You're not going to have any issues emerging onto the highway, obviously. So anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 11.7 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 11.5 inch ventilated rear discs. As far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes, that is going to come in at 114 feet. As far as the braking feel goes, it's excellent. I love the braking feel on the Rogue. It definitely feels like 60 to 0 when 114 feet. There's no dead spots in the braking. Immediately brings you to a stop. So definitely no issues there. Then touching on suspension and handling. Up front, there is an independent strut type front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension. Front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as ride quality goes, it's actually been perfectly fine. I'll say that I haven't hit any really punishing roads yet here in Frederick, but I will say ride quality has been perfectly fine. And as far as steering feel goes, it tends to lean on the looser side of things, but I do remember in the previous generation Rogue, that steering feel was horrible. It was so loose, but it's heavier than that still, but it does tend to lean on the looser side. So I'll just put it that way. As far as cabin noise goes, I'm going 40 miles per hour right now. You guys could probably tell. There's a whole lot of wind noise or road noise really coming into the cabin. So I do like that. They did a pretty good job with that. And touching on visibility, that is one of the best parts actually. I can see wonderfully out the back definitely one of the better suvs for rear visibility for sure i did want to mention on top of that there is a head-up display that is available for the platinum trim level if you wanted to go that route as well but that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 nissan rogue 
All right, so here she is, you guys. The new 2022 Nissan Rogue finished in pearl white tricoat. In case anybody was curious, our exterior color name specifically. Let's go ahead and start up front on the Rogue here. LED headlights actually come standard on every single trim level across the board. I absolutely love that. They do come with LED daytime running lights as well, the automatic feature as well. LED fog lights down below coming with the SL and platinum trim levels only, and they're found just above those chrome accents on the bottom portion of the front lip there. Front air curtains can be found to the side there, as you guys can see. Chrome V-Motion front grille, of course, in typical Nissan fashion. And again, that chrome trim is taken down to the front lip there as well. And in case anybody was not already familiar with the way the Rogue headlights work, the headlights are actually in the middle section there. The daytime running lights are going to be on top. So traditionally, I think people probably assume that the headlights are the top portion of that lighting, but they're actually just below those daytime running lights, in case anybody was curious. But anyways, that pretty much rounds out the front end of this one. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of the Rogue. All right, so now since we are around to the side, roof rails do come standard on the SL and Platinum trim levels. They will be optional then on the SV. You do also have some chrome upper window trim. You guys can see that. Rear privacy glass is going to come standard for all trim levels. Body color power adjustable side mirrors coming standard. The SV and up though is going to add to that heated side mirrors with LED integrated turn signals then as well. And so looking down then at the side skirts, you can see some chrome trim accenting to tie to tie it together with that upper window chrome trim, I suppose. The matte black side skirts and fender surrounds are gonna come standard on all trim levels across the board. Taking a look down at the wheel configuration, 17-inch aluminum alloys for the S, 18-inch aluminum alloys for the SV, and then 19-inch aluminum alloys for the SL and platinum trim levels. But pretty much rounds out the side profile here. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of the Rogue, body color shark fin antenna all the way to the top, just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just below that rear window wiper then you have the rogue lettering spelled out horizontally i always like that look personally led taillights actually come standard on every single trim level across the board so leds all the way around gotta love that do you have some aluminum trim on that rear bumper you guys could see that down below there and there actually is a single exhaust outlet albeit tucked away but there is an exhaust under there though so having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip So, but now since we are around to the back of the road when it comes to opening that rear tailgate it is a hands-free power tailgate for the sl and platinum trim levels power tailgate then is going to be optional on the sv but there's several different ways to go ahead and open it there is a button on the key fob there is a button on the tailgate itself there's a button by the driver's left knee and like i said it's hands-free so all you need to do is simply just kick your foot underneath that rear bumper and it's going to automatically then open up for you then as well but anyways once opened up cargo capacity comes in at 36.8 cubic feet for comparison's sake the hyundai santa fe comes in at 35.9 cubic feet honda crv 37.6 so it's kind of right in the middle of the pack there it's pretty much on point for the segment with the rear seats down because there is a 60 40 split that is going to bump that up to 72 cubic feet which is plenty impressive there there are four cargo tie down anchors in that cargo area there is also some in-floor storage if you go with the sl or platinum trim levels that's how you're going to go ahead and get that there is a spare tire if you lift up underneath of that in floor storage there is some cargo lighting back there of course as well grocery bag hooks can be found back there and there's even a 12 volt power outlet then as well but anyways then making our way up to the rear legroom that comes in at 38.5 inches so for reference i am an even six feet tall this is how much space i had in those rear seats there rear ventilation does come standard there's actually a usb port plus a standard phone charging port just underneath of that rear ventilation that was pretty cool check this out though rear window sunshades coming with the sl and platinum you guys know i always like seeing those rear window sunshades especially important when you have kids in the back so definitely a big fan of that rear center armrest with couple holders was comfortable back there as well and if you go with the platinum like we have today you're even going to get heated rear seats 
as well. So pretty much everything you could possibly want for the rear passengers is back there. But then make our way to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seats for the S. SV trim level is going to add an eight-way power driver's seat with two-way power lumbar. SL trim level is going to add to that four-way power adjustable passenger seat, memory settings, leather seating, and heated front seats then. And then the platinum trim adds to that quilted leather seating, which is a pretty cool look, I gotta admit. But anyways, seating was plenty comfortable with the lumbar adjustments and the leather seating and the heated seats on this cold day here in Maryland. Definitely a big fan of the seat comfort. But now, let's go ahead and take a look at the steering wheel. Tilt and telescoping steering wheel does come standard. It is manually adjustable. Leather wraps for the SL and Platinum. That leather wrap steering wheel, by the way, is optional on the SV. It is heated for the SL and Platinum as well. And again, optional on the SV. I love the heated steering wheel, especially on today where it's a little bit colder. Then make your way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key. Essentially, all of your buttons are located on one side of the key. You got your Nissan logo at the top of course but lock unlock the button up the rear hatch there and there is that remote start button at the very top then as well which by the way comes on the sv trim level and up but it is essentially all keyless entry with a push button start for all trim levels across the board so all i'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just in front of the shifter and so once started up gauges are going to differ depending upon which trim level that you go with you do have your typical analog gauges that come standard on the s sv and s L. But if you were to go with the Platinum like we have today, you do have a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster, which is customizable as well. There's a little button on the left side of the steering wheel where you can change meter view is what you want to hit. And that gives you more of a traditional look or it gives you a completely different digital look, which is so stinking cool. So definitely a fan that you can customize the gauges. And again, because it's all digital, it has pretty much everything you could possibly want on those gauges up there, everything you're looking for. But anyways, then make our way to overall interior quality overhead sunglass holder does come standard there is a dual pane panoramic moonroof for the sl and platinum optional by the way on the sv overhead led map lighting is going to be available interior accent lighting is going to come with the platinum trim level only dual zone climate control for the sv but tri-zone climate control for the sl and platinum meaning of rear passengers can set their own temperature as well which is pretty cool wireless phone charger coming with the platinum that's located just in front of the shifter there also there's some hidden storage just underneath of that wireless phone charger and shifter, which I always like to mention with the Rogue because that's where girls can put their purse. Maybe you just bought something you want to kind of conceal it a little bit. So that's going to be there for you. Overall, as far as interior quality goes, it's actually not that bad. We kind of have a two-tone look here with like a dark brown and a black. So I like the two-tone finish this year. You kind of have a wood look, although it's not genuine wood, just above the passenger side glove box. It's actually plastic, but it looks like wood, which is pretty cool. You have some contrast stitching just above that, which looks really good. In front of the shifter, you have a phone charging port, a USB port, and a 12-volt power outlet. You have dual cup holders just to the right of the shifter, and surrounding the cup holders, you actually have this really nice texturized finish, which I'm actually a huge fan of. I like that they did that. There's an electromechanical parking brake, and within the center armrest, decent amount of storage there as well. So overall, interior quality is definitely plenty fine. I've had no complaints there. Then take a look at the infotainment screen. Again, it's gonna differ depending upon the trim level that you go with. There's an eight inch color touchscreen display coming with the S, S, V, and S, L. However, if you were to go with the platinum like we have today, you get a nine inch color touchscreen display. Both setups though, get Bluetooth and audio streaming, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, but the premium trim though, will give you wireless Apple CarPlay, not wireless Android Auto, but at least wireless Apple CarPlay, which is pretty cool. Factory navigation system coming with the Platinum. You can actually check out weather information and stock prices up there as well if you wanted to. I didn't find any uh, crypto prices, unfortunately, but still, you got stock prices up there. You can also check out your radio information, of course, as well. And so, by the way, when it comes to the sound systems, you get four speakers with the S, six speakers with the SV and SL, and then a Bose sound system with dual subwoofers for the Platinum. And so, therefore, that's the one we have today. So, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and... Let's test out the sound system on this one. Yeah, 
it's fine. It's plenty fine. I actually have Bose sound systems in my cars before on my old Infinity, so definitely no issues there. And you know with Bose, it's plenty reliable as well. So that sound system is definitely where it's at when it comes to the Rogue. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen at least is when you do put the Rogue in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. But if you were to go with the SV trim level and up, you're also going to get a 360 degree monitor. And again, that's with the SV trim level and up. Typically with other manufacturers, you have to go to the very top trim level to get that 360 degree monitor. So I like that they put it on the SV. But anyways, that is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, which is the very highest designation given by IIHS. So that pretty much says it all right there. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard driver and passenger knee airbags as well. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors to tethers for children for the rear car seats, real child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard, forward collision warning, autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian detection, lane departure warning, a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, rear parking sensors, reverse automatic braking, high beam assist, and a driver attention monitoring system then as well. And again, that's for all trims. But then if you were to go with the SV and up, you're going to get adaptive cruise control. And then if you were to go with the platinum, you're going to get front, rear, and side sonar system. So essentially all around the vehicle, that's pretty cool. And also traffic sign recognition then as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the 2022 Rogue, the new engine, it's okay. It's a little bit quicker. I couldn't really tell all that much of a difference and I'm usually pretty good at telling the difference with those things. So not a huge difference between the 21 and the 22 as far as power goes and things like that. So I just wanted to mention that. CVT still feels like a CVT, unfortunately. That's probably the one thing that Nissan still has to get rid of, not just because it is a CVT, but because CVTs are somewhat emotionless. That's all. Decent miles per gallon though. I will say that for an SUV. This thing does really good with miles per gallon with the size of this SUV. So well done Nissan for that. Great exterior design as well. I'm definitely a big fan of that. And the rear window sun shades, I'm always a fan of that as well. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the new Rogue in the comment section below. And that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're in new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know when I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold. Oh,